name is Peter Cameron. I'm a grade five, six teacher at St. Elizabeth School in what? Thunder Bay, Ontario. The name of the program that my students and I established is called the Junior Water Walkers. Yeah. It started with my class in grade five, six, but really it could be done by any class. We know that we have um, students who have joined who are as young as uh, kindergarten mm -hmm. and we have high school students and it really it's open it's open to anyone. Josephine would want that. The Junior Water Walkers is a school program mm -hmm. but again it can evolve and certainly become um, open and would be open to any community groups organizations, uh, businesses even. So the aim of the program, I think maybe just to give a little bit of the history of the program okay. first is um, Josephine Mandeman is the original water walker and she's from Thunder Bay, Ontario. She shares my home community and she began to walk for water in and about the year 2003 and the reason why she decided to begin to walk for Nibe, for water, is because she was shared a prophecy. And the prophecy was that by the year 2030, an ounce of water would be worth as much as an ounce of gold. Mm -hmm. And then the Ogama, who shared his prophecy with her, said, and what are you going to do about it? And so she spent three years thinking about what she would do to, to protect water and she decided that she was going to walk the talk and so she decided to walk mm -hmm. and uh, first she she walked around Lake Superior and then from there the movement grew and um, to date she's walked over 25,000 kilometers bringing awareness of the need to protect water and so one day my son and I were walking along a small inland lake in Thunder Bay and we passed by this Anishinaabe lady dressed in traditional clothing, carrying a eagle head staff and a copper bucket. And my son asked me, you know, what would this lady be doing and why was she dressed in that type of clothing? And I said to Kai, we can go back and ask her if you would like. And the moment passed. Mm -hmm. um, three weeks later, I found Josephine Mandeman on the cover of a children's book called The Water Walker. And so I invited Josephine and the author, Joanne Robertson, to our class. And my students had, had learned a little bit more about Josephine and had found that she had Parkinson's disease at the time. And um, they decided that they were going to take up her walk. Mm -hmm. Josephine's greatest wish is that children continue to bring awareness to water and do something and walk for water. Mm -hmm. And so at the time when she came to visit, um, they also told her that they were going to become junior water walkers. Mm -hmm. So the intent of the program is, is quite simple. It's to, it's to honor Josephine Mandeman and to bring awareness of the need to protect water. And so we really have four pillars, which is simply learn about water, adopt a body of water, protect that water, and then eventually walk for water. And then uh, my students decided we're a fairly well globally connected classroom. They thought that we should invite other classes to join our walk for Nokomis. And to date, we have 153 classes from really all around the Great Lakes, across Canada, and, and beginning to spread throughout the world, um, joining together. Um, in honor of Nokomis yeah. and to protect the water. It is the Junior Water Walkers website, which my kids helped me to develop. Yeah. And um, yeah, so people are signing on. Um, they're using the book, The Water Walker, as kind of a, of a beginning piece. Mm -hmm. And then it's simply becoming an inquiry for, for all the classes who are participating. Everybody is kind of going in their own direction, but with two simple goals, really. To, to learn about and protect water. So it's the water conservation or protection piece, but it's also the piece to, we're encouraging people to connect with their indigenous community and to learn about the traditions and the ceremonies 
um, that that revolve around the water as well. So really, what what we're doing right now, we're we're fo focused on the first pillar. We're simply learning about water, mm. and so my students every year I read Paddle to the Sea to my students, and it's a it's a romantic journey through the Great Lakes, um, starting in. Nipigon, which is only an hour east of Thunder Bay, and it takes kids on a voyage throughout the Great Lakes, but really based in 1942. Mm -hmm. um, they also have access to Google Earth and a Voyager story that I actually helped create called Blue Gold. And so they get to take a virtual journey throughout the Great Lakes, and it helps them understand just how great the Great Lakes are. We live on the largest source of fresh water in the world. But also it's important for them to understand that, that even our Great Lakes are at risk. So we're learning about that. Um, we've watched a couple of documentaries, one um, created by Jill Heenerth, who's an underwater cave diver. And she brings awareness of the need to protect this great resource that we have as well. And then we've also watched um, a documentary on on Josephine, on Nokomis, um, and and it's it's the story of of her water walk, and also the story of so many of the traditions that that were so important to her uh, during her water walk, and now our our second step, actually the rest of the classes at Saint Elizabeth School have joined the junior water walkers, which would be my grade five six class, and the six class were kind of you know the core of the junior water walkers. But as my colleagues have heard more about the junior water walkers, they've decided that it has to be a school-wide activity. And so the younger ones are going to learn from my students and the grade six students what it means to be a junior water walker, the story of the junior water walkers and who inspired the junior water walkers. So they'll be going and making presentations mm -hmm. to the younger classes and then it'll be up to the school to decide on a body of water that they're going to adopt. Mm -hmm. We're going to figure out how we can protect that body of water, but also water in general. Mm -hmm. And then on a Friday in May, our school will go out and walk at that body of water. As I've alluded to before, Josephine simply said one of her greatest wishes is that young people will take up her cause and do something to protect water. Or really, I, I believe Josephine just wants people to do something, whether or not it become um, an awareness and, and the need to protect water or another activism piece as well. But I think it's important that, that kids really do know and understand who Josephine Mandeman was. She lives in Thunder Bay and I really didn't know anything about Josephine. So, I think it's important that we we learn from Josephine and I think the success of the program will be based on how many people Josephine has inspired and I think it's already fairly successful my students have done some math and they figured out that in May uh, together with the rest of the junior water walkers there will be over a million steps taken in honor of no my vision is that the Great grand scheme is really, Josephine has said, water connects us all. And that is pretty profound. I mean, I can't think of any other thing in the world that binds us and, and brings us all together. So, you know, the whole, the whole goal or the, the big dream is that um, we help to make the world just a little bit better of a place. Already great, but it can be better. It's it's open for anyone from around the world, and and it's something that the kids really get excited about because they have their hand in kind of directing where I guess our footprints will lead, our mm -hmm. footsteps will lead to.